In this video, we're gonna build a checkout flow for a single product. In this case, we're gonna sell a box of chocolates from a candy store that I've already set up inside of Stripe. We're gonna use a tool from our documentation called the Integration Builder. This will allow us to download some example code and in just a couple minutes, we'll be up and running with a checkout integration. So let's get started. I'm gonna start by going into the account settings section of my dashboard and looking at the account details under my business settings. I wanna confirm that my business information is correct and that what customers will see is accurate. So I'll look at both my account details and the public details, confirming the support email, support phone number, and statement descriptors. I'll also take a look at the brand settings Notice that I've already set an icon, a logo, and some brand colors and accents that will appear in checkout when customers are going through this payment flow. Finally, I wanna confirm that customer email settings are up to date as expected. So I will toggle on successful payments and refunds and scroll down to save. That way customers will receive emails when they purchase my products. Finally, we'll head over to the product section and note that we've already created this product listing for a dark chocolate collection. So we're gonna sell a dozen pieces of our most popular 48V signature chocolate. This is the price ID that we'll use when creating the checkout session later. To get started quickly on our app, we'll use Stripe's Integration Builder. This is a tool that's in the docs that's gonna give us a fully working example of a Stripe checkout integration. To get to the integration builder, we'll head over to payments and then select accept online payments. Today, we're gonna to use HTML on the front end and Java on the back end. We also wanna confirm that we are still logged into our account, which we can see in the top right corner. Next, we can scroll down and define a product that we wanna sell by selecting from this dropdown or adding a new test product. Note that when I select a product, its price ID is set in the line items and we'll come back and talk more about this in a bit. Next, we can scroll up to download the full app. The code that's included in this app will also have our API key and the price ID for the product pre-configured. All right, let's take a look at what's in the download. So we have this public directory off on the left here with a CSS file and three HTML files. Now from Stripe checkout, the customer will be redirected to either this success or cancel page, depending on whether or not they actually made a purchase. Our checkout HTML page is where the customer will preview their order. So let's go take a look at this. We see some HTML to display the product, but right now it's just showing the example product, not ours. So we wanna update the image URL and the product information here. Now, right below the product div, we can see a submit button that when clicked is gonna call our server route create checkout session. So let's head over and take a look at our server. At the very top, we see several different dependencies. First of all, we're using the Spark web server. We are also importing Stripe and some classes for interacting with checkout sessions and building the params that we're gonna send when creating the API call to create a checkout session. You can also see that my test secret key has already been set. That's because I was logged into my account when I downloaded the code from the integration builder. Now, if this isn't set, you'll need to go into the Stripe dashboard, get your API keys and update it. Now our server has just one route at the moment. The one we saw referenced in checkout.html and that is this create checkout session. This route is gonna make an API call to Stripe to create the checkout session object, which controls what the customer will see on the payment flow. Now there's a lot of different parameters you can include when you're creating a checkout session, but for this example, we're gonna keep it very simple and focus on just those required parameters. So first we set the mode on the checkout session. This tells checkout what type of payment we're gonna be making. This is set to payment here because the customer is gonna make a one-time purchase of our chocolates. But this could also be set to something else if we had a different pricing model. For example, if we wanted to charge customers later or set up recurring payments, we can control that with the mode. Next, we're gonna set some URLs that Stripe will redirect our customer to from the checkout page. These are set to the success and cancel HTML pages for our app. Finally, we pass in the line items array. This is the parameter you'll use to define a list of line items the customer will purchase. In this case, we're just passing one item and the integration builder has already pre-populated the params with a line item instance with a quantity of one and a price parameter set to our price ID. Once the checkout session has been created, we're gonna return 
a response that tells the browser to redirect to this newly created checkout session URL. We're gonna head back into the terminal here and to install our dependencies, we'll run Maven package. Then we'll fire up the server with java-cp target with sample jar with dependencies.jar. And then we're gonna pass this class path of com.stripe.sample.server. This will start our server running on localhost 4242, which we can open up in the browser, head over to localhost 4242 slash checkout.html. And when we click on the checkout button here, we're taken to Stripe checkout and I can see the product information, enter a test card to complete the purchase. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to head over to the documentation and take a look at the other videos in this series to learn more about what you can do with Stripe Checkout. See you in the next one.